Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are LA. It's time for Dodger Baseball. Live from Dodger Stadium, Prime Ticket presents the Dodgers as they take on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Friday night to you, wherever you may be. Dodgers and Bucks, the Bucks stop here, and usually the Dodgers are delighted. They have beaten Pittsburgh 14 of the last 16 games here at Dodger Stadium, and they won the season series last year, six games out of seven. Zach Granke will make his debut as a Dodger tonight. He is four in one lifetime in his career. Left-hander Jonathan Sanchez, you might remember him. He formerly pitched with San Francisco, pitched a no-hitter for that matter. He is three and six lifetime against the Dodgers. However, for Sanchez last year, a disastrous season. He was one and nine, but he's a much better pitcher than that. So the opening of a three-game series, Dodgers having been completely shut down by giant pitching, hoping to get well at the hands of the Pittsburgh Pirates. We'll get to the ball game. We'll have a whole lot more coming up right after this. Time Ticket is brought to you by the Hyundai Let's Go Sales event now through April 30th by AT&T Rethink Possible and by Jack in the Box. Come in today. Try the Hot Mess Burger. 
And we are moments away from first pitch here at Dodger Stadium, L.A., hosting the Pittsburgh Pirates. Start of three and a beautiful night for baseball. Mid-60s, calm wind, mostly clear, and the sun is setting, and the lights are on. About to take care of business. Dodgers and the Bucks with Steve Lyons and Patrick O'Neill. Well, boy, the Dodgers lost two or three to the Giants. The numbers we're about to show you at home are, are, are shocking, so... Beware. When people yeah. got on base. Not pretty. Yeah, people might think that this was back to 2012 season when the Dodgers couldn't score any runs. The same thing happened in this series against San Francisco. And as you said, look at the ugly average numbers with runners on, with runners in scoring position, with runners in scoring position with two outs. This was a big Achilles uh, heel Heel for them last year when they got guys on they could not get them over and they could not get them in and when you think about it sure they faced some really tough pitching against the san francisco giants but they did get guys on base they had opportunities to drive them in they did a poor job when guys were on base that's obvious by those numbers that has to change quickly mad camp 370 last year versus pittsburgh and as you mentioned the pregame show he crushes lefties 343 in his career so he'll bounce back as will the dodgers look forward to the baseball game coming up next Ben scully has the call we'll see you for post game To you wherever you may be welcome to dodger stadium game one of the three game series between the dodgers and the pittsburgh pirates sunset time in los angeles as the dodgers take the field having lost two out of three against the giants the pirates meanwhile have lost two out of three against the chicago cubs so each trying to get squared away against the other but of course as we mentioned earlier Dodgers have done exceptionally well here against Pittsburgh, having beaten the Pirates 14 of the last 16. Clint Hurdle would like to turn that thing around. Let's take a look at Clint's lineup now and the names therein. And it goes this way. Starling Marte will be in left field and Neil Walker at second base. Andrew McCutcheon in center field. Pedro Alvarez will be at third base. Old friend Russell Martin returns behind the plate for the Bucks. Garrett Jones will be at first base, Travis Snyder in right field, Clint Barmas at shortstop, and Jonathan Sanchez on the mound. On the mound for the Dodgers, making his debut for the Blue here at Dodger Stadium, the pride of Apopka, Florida, and that would be Zach Cranky. He's 6'2", 200-pounder, 30 years old, originally a first-round pick by the Royals back in 2002. 
Among his accomplishments while he's been in the big leagues, from September 2008 through late April of 09 while with Kansas City, Zach threw 43 consecutive innings without allowing an earned run. He did allow an unearned run over the six starts. So in doing that, Granke joined Drysdale, Hershiser, and Jim Bagby as the only pitchers in Major League history to have six consecutive starts without allowing an earned run. So Granke, whose mom and dad were teachers, they're both retired now, will be trying to teach the Bucks a lesson, and we'll see how it comes out. Starling Marte will open it up for the Bucks. Marte is from Santa Domingo in the Dominican Republic, right-handed all the way, 6'2", about 180 pounds. Last year with the Pirates in 40-some-odd games, he had five home runs. His father played third base for local teams in the Dominican. Starling started out as a shortstop, and by the time he was eight years old, people were saying, hey, you're a special player. Well, here he is in the big leagues. Takes an off-speed pitch for a strike, and the count 0 and 1. Marte spells that last name M-A-R-T-E. He's been the leadoff man now in four straight games, and he's reached base safely in all three, hitting safely in two. Cho's bunt runs up and takes off the plate, and a one-ball, one-strike count. Lovely evening. Temperature 64 degrees. No breeze to even speak of as Marte followed by Walker and then McCutcheon. Granke rocks back, turns right-hander over the top, and a sinker is swung on and missed, and the count one and two. For Zach Granke, you're going to get a four-seam fastball. He has the two-seamer that sinks. Then he has a change-up, what they call a, a spike curve, almost a knuckle curve, and a cut fastball. A lot of people say he reminds him of Greg Maddox. The next pitch is a little low, fastball just off the plate, and the count, two balls and two strikes. So Starling Marte opens it up for the Bucks, as the Bucks have stopped here and with a purpose. Granke turns, right-hander ready and back, and the pitch way inside with a fastball, almost hit Marte, and the count goes three and two. Zach Granke, very quiet, an honors student in high school looks in to get a sign. AJ hangs it out for him. And the 3 2 pitch to Starling Marte is swung on. Down ball to short. Justin Sellers is on it. And just like that, one away. Take a look at the Dodgers with the leather right now. And that would be Gonzalez and Ellis, Sellers and Cruz with Crawford Kemp and Ethier in the outfield. AJ Ellis behind the plate. Here comes Neil Walker. Neil Walker, a terrific player, a switch hitter, a very much of a solid citizen up there and hitting second in the lineup. He rarely swings at the first pitch. Let's see about tonight. He looks and takes low ball one, one and oh. For the Bucks, he was Mr. Clutch last year. He was number one in picking up runners from third base with less than two outs. He was tied with Andrew McCutcheon. Swings, hits one in the air to left field. Crawford going back to his right and picks it off. So Neil Walker goes a long way to left field. And we have two downs. And talking about McCutcheon, here comes the man himself. Andrew McCutcheon, the pride of Pittsburgh, and what a player he is. McCutcheon who was right down to the wire with Buster Posey last year, and Posey beat him out. But on the way, McCutcheon picked up a gold glove, a silver slugger award. He was an all-star. They also signed him to a six-year extension, so he's going to be around a while. He promptly swings a towering fly ball that appears playable, and Matt Kemp moves over and picks it off. So Granke, a 1-2-3 first inning. And at the end of half an inning, Pirates nothing, Dodgers coming up.
pitches against Zach Granke. Now we'll take a look at the Dodger lineup. It'll be Carl Crawford leading off in left field and Mark Ellis at second base. Matt Kemp is in center, followed by Adrian Gonzalez, and then Luis Cruz is back at third base. Andre Ichier is in right field. A.J. Ellis, the catcher. Justin Sellers back at shortstop. And Zach Granke on the mound. On the mound for the Pirates, Jonathan Sanchez from Mayaguez and Sabana Grande in Puerto Rico. And the big left-handers first pitch low to Crawford. Ball one, one and oh. Jonathan is an even six, a 200-pounder. 31 years old in November. Works inside under the hands, 2-0 to count. Sanchez grew up in Puerto Rico, and he was about 12, 13 years old, and across from his house was a huge leafy mango tree. Breaking ball outside, ball three. Well, when you're about 12 years old and you have a, a tall tree with mangoes hanging down, what would you do as a kid? You'd get some rocks and try to hit the mangoes, which is what he and his buddies would do. The 3-0 pitch is in for a strike, 3-1. and one. And one day, he was knocking mangoes out of the tree at 13, and a baseball coach came by and watched him throw. 3-1 pitch is a strike, 3-2. and two. Anyway, he asked Jonathan, you want to play baseball? He kind of shrugged. He said, do you want to try? Sanchez thought him and said, yeah, okay. He really liked basketball more than baseball. 3-2 to Crawford is strike three called, and on each of those three pitches, Crawford was on his way to first base. So he and Mike Carlson certainly did not agree on any of the pitches. So we have one away in the first inning, and the batter is Mark Ellis. There's our man Clint Hurdle. Starting his third year managing as the Pirates, he managed Colorado for eight years. He is the 39th manager in Pittsburgh history. Good guy. All right, one away, and here's Mark Ellis takes a strike, and they count 0-1. Well, where were we with Sanchez throwing rocks and mangoes? He was so impressed was the coach, the way this kid threw the rocks. He decided to put him on his team as Ellis swings at a fastball. However, the team, would you believe it or not, was named the Dodgers. And they played about 25 minutes away from Sanchez's house, and he didn't have a ride to go to practice. Strike two pitch is inside, ball one. What'd they do? The coach moved the team back to a little field next to Sanchez's house, and that was the beginning. And the high point came a few years later. The pitch L is low. July the 10th of 2009. The little kid who was knocking mangoes out of a tree with his father in the stands watching the game. He pitched a no hitter against the San Diego Padres. 2 2 pitch is inside, ball three. In fact, it was almost a perfect game. The only base runner was Chase Headley, who had reached on an error by Juan Uribe in the eighth inning. Here's the 3 2 pitch swung on, popped up around the plate. Russell Martin gets rid of the mask, settles under it, and makes the catch. So Mark Ellis pops it up, and we have two down in the first inning, and the battle will be Matt Kemp. So Matt Kemp come up after a tough series against San Francisco and hoping to fight his way out. You know, there was so much said and written during the Giants series, so much hoopla that everybody talks about what a great hitter Kemp is in the month of April. Well, right now, he's been brought down to earth. He is 0 for 10 in April. Sanchez with the left side of the infield loaded up, and the pitch is low, ball one, one and 0. So the second baseman, Neil Walker, moves over beyond the bag. So three bucks on the left side. One ball and no strikes to Matt Kemp. Sanchez into the windup, back he comes, shoots a fastball away. Two and oh, the count to Matt. No score, we're just starting first inning, lovely evening, and we'll wind up with fireworks after the game every Friday. Two balls and no strikes to Matt Kemp. Kemp, you know, has a career batting average of 343 against left-handers. The 2-0 pitch is away, ball three. 
So 3-0 the count. Well, you never know. Mattingly trying to get him started. Might very well let him rip 3-0 here in the first inning. We'll see. Sanchez into the windup. The 3-0 pitch is swung on. A lifted into shallow right field. Charging in and getting under it is Travis Snyder for the out. So sure enough, you can understand Mattingly giving him the green light. Down go the Dodgers, one, two, three, and at the end of an inning, no score. The Bucks not only stop here, they've been stopped here. They have lost 16 of the last 20 at Dodger Stadium, 0 and 3 here last year. You have to go back to September 15, 2011, when they last won. Pedro Alvarez, big fella, 6'3, 235, left handed, from Santa Domingo, went to Vanderbilt University, was originally drafted by the Red Sox, but chose instead to take the scholarship to Vanderbilt. Strike one pitch on the way is a ground ball to the right side. Mark Ellis picks it up and throws him out. And just like that, one out and four in a row for Zach Granke. For the Pirates, catcher, number 55. Now Russell Martin coming up, still wearing number 55. And it's nice to see him and welcome him back to Dodger Stadium. He played long and hard here. Dodger fans, I'm sure, We'll never forget Russell Martin. He signed a two year deal with the Pirates and replaced another former Dodger catcher, Rod Barajas. So Martin, 5'11, 215, 30 years old, and takes a strike in the count 0 and 1. Maybe you don't remember, but we always talked about it when he was with the Dodger. His full name is Russell Nathan Coltrane Jeanson Martin. Strike one pitch on the way, and that's a little low. Nathan is for his great grandfather. Jeanson, his mother's maiden name. Coltrane, the great saxophonist, John Coltrane. Here's the 1 1 pitch on the way. Martin takes inside, ball two. In those days, Martin had the initial J in front of his last name on the uniform, J. Martin, but not now. His dad, a saxophonist, played music in the Montreal subway system. 2-1 pitch is a little low, ball three. In fact, his father, who's a lovely man, soft-spoken, he just enjoyed being with him. His father played the saxophone here for the national anthem one night with his dad playing the saxophone, and Russell was holding the music. Ground ball slowly and foul up along third. Martin was originally signed by the Dodgers back in 2002. He was a 17th round pick, so he didn't have a magic wand at all in those days. 
but he's had some pretty good years in the big leagues. He hit 21 home runs last year for the Yankees and 18 the year before. And five years ago, he had 19 home runs for the Dodgers. 3 2 pitch coming up. Fastball, ground ball to short. Nice big hop for Sellers over to Gonzalez. And quickly, two out, five in a row, retired by Zach Granke. And the batter now will be Garrett Jones. So we're in the top of the second inning. No score in the ball game. Sometime in the next couple of innings, we have to tell you it's rather an amazing chain of coincidences as Garrett Jones checks in. It starts off with Chris Davis playing for the Baltimore Orioles. Jones left hand batter and the first pitch is high and away. One ball and no strike to Garrett Jones. Garrett originally signed by the Braves at a high school. The 1 0 pitch on the way on the hand swung on and missed. Jones has some sock. He had 27 home runs last year. Because everybody knew he had sock going back 10 years ago. He had four home runs in a game in the minor leagues, the Midwest League. Garrett swings, hits it foul, and out of play. Garrett Jones, six feet four, 235, out of Harvey, Illinois. Played seven and a half years in the minor leagues for two organizations, released by one of them, and yet battled and battled and was finally called up. One and two to Garrett Jones. They load up the right side on Garrett, and he takes a pitch at his feet. And they count two and two. When Garrett Jones was first called up, and that's July 1st, 2009, he hit seven home runs in his first 12 games. He hit 10 home runs the month of July. You have to go back to Willie Stargell to have a home run hitter like that. 2 2 pitch on the way, way inside, ball three. The so three and two the count. The Dodgers with a brief triangle defense. Sellers is over the bag, the second base side. Mark Ellis is on the grass, and Gonzalez deep at first. But the outfield is split, a gap in right center. 3 2 pitch on the way, off speed, a soft one hopper that explodes on the grass and gets away from Mark Ellis. When it first left the bat, it looked like Mark Ellis would be able to catch it on the fly. Instead, it landed on the grass, and he couldn't handle it, so we'll wait for the scoring. If he were on the skin part of the infield, I think he makes the play. But on the grass, it just skidded on by him, and it will be a base hit. So a two-out single by Garrett Jones, and the batter now will be Travis Snyder. Travis, another left-hand hitter, as Granke has to go out of the stretch for the first time. And Travis has a look at a strike and the count 0 and 1. Travis, another 235 pounder. He's an even six out of Kirkland, Washington, and he was a number one pick by the Toronto Blue Jays. He had spent last year in Las Vegas. The strike one pitch on the way, fastball on the outside corner for a strike. We're in the top of the second inning, no score. Dodgers and Pirates, game one. Clayton Kershaw tomorrow night. He'll go up against A.J. Burnett. Rio will pitch on Sunday against Locke, and then the Dodgers briefly go out on the road. Pitch of the plate is taken high. The road trip, San Diego, then Arizona, and then home for San Diego. Zach Granke has allowed a hit. He made only nine pitches in the first inning, retired five of the first six. He made 26 pitches total. And the 1 2 pitch coming up. Zach Reddy deals, and he's high and away. Ball two, two and two. Travis Snyder, they say, may be the, the best hitter coming through the state of Washington since Grady Sizemore. 
Here's the 2 2 pitch coming up. Granky deals and it is low, ball three. So Zach goes all the way. After getting Alvarez and Martin, he gives up the single to Garrett Jones and a full count. And he's now made 19 pitches in the inning, 28 in the game. And Zach out of a stretch. The 3 2 pitch with the runner going is swung on. Ground ball to Sellers. Justin, plenty of time makes it. And that's that. No runs to hit a man left. At the end of an inning and a half, no score. Dodger and Hello Kitty fans, a reminder, Wednesday the 17th, the first 50,000 fans at the game with the Padres receive their own Dodger-themed Hello Kitty fleece blanket. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash promotion. I don't know if we can get this in, but Adrian Gonzalez is starting it off, and we mentioned a story that uh, is a little strange. It involved Adrian Gonzalez at the end of it. Sanchez into the windup and delivers in the first pitch inside ball one. Today, Chris Davis of Baltimore homered again. That means he's homered in the first four games. And believe it or not, Davis drove in 16 runs in the four games. Adrian fouls it away. Now, the only other three big leaguers to match four home runs in the first four games, Nelson Cruz, Mark McGuire, and the first to do it, Willie Mays. But that's just part of the story. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch to Adrian Gonzalez, and it's low, ball two, two and one. Chris Davis was pitching against the Boston Red Sox, but he was a position player first. And during that game, he went 0 for 8 with five strikeouts. But since the game went 17, Davis pitched the seventh inning, uh, 17th inning and won the game. Adrian takes inside. In that same game... Adrian Gonzalez went 0 for 8, faced Chris Davis, and struck out. Though anytime you read about Chris Davis and his home run, there's a story about Chris going 0 for 8, then becoming a pitcher in the 17th and winning the game. Adrian, meanwhile, pops it up. Third baseman Alvarez has to come over into foul ground and puts it away. You want to talk about the ups and downs of baseball? That one game. Chris Davis, 0 for 8, 5 strikeouts. They press him to pitch the mound, and he winds up being the winning pitcher. And, of course, for Adrian, that's no doubt the toughest game he's ever had. Here's Luis Cruz, one out, second inning, no score in the ball game. Jonathan Sanchez flips a fastball in for a strike, and they count 0 and 1. Luis Cruz has certainly been busy, even though we're just started the year, really. 
The strike one pitch on the way he takes off the plate. Give you an idea so far. He's played 10 innings at shortstop. 17 innings at third base. And the season just starting. The 1-1 one -one pitch hit in the air to left center. Very playable. Andrew McCutcheon is right there. So a couple of balls hit in the air. That's five in a row retired by Jonathan Sanchez. And the battle will be Andre Ethier. Right fielder, number 16. A couple of more Andre notes on that Chris Ethier. Davis story. Another player who went 0 for 8 in that game, as we mentioned, Chris Davis and Adrian Gonzalez. And Davis tied Willie Mays with a home run in the first four games this year. The crazy game at Fenway last year, that took place on Willie Mays' birthday, May the 6th. Meanwhile, Sanchez ready, Ethier swings, comes up empty, and the count 0 and 1. So Andre Ethier, two for five against left handers. They load up the right side on him. Sanchez back, works it low and inside. The outfield fanned out straight away and deep. Snyder is deep in right field. The shortstop is the third baseman, Pedro Alvarez. And then Barmas, Walker, and Jones on the right side of the infield. One one pitch is low and inside. Two and one to count to Andre Ethier. Ethier has hit in all three games, three for 12. Now Ethier backs out for the moment. Sanchez backs off the rubber. Now Jonathan, just about from the third base side of the rubber, looks into Russell Martin and the 2-1 pitch, and that's in at the knees. Looked like a good change, and the count two and two. So Ethier either annoyed at himself for taking the pitch or maybe grumbling to himself thinking the pitch was low, but you never know. And he just checks back in at the plate. So Jonathan Sanchez, the mango hunter, looks in to get a sign. And the 2-2 pitch on the way. Breaking ball pull foul out of play. Everybody clap your hands. No score. Bottom of the second inning. We've had one hit in the game, a single by Garrett Jones on a sinking line drive that skidded off the grass in shallow right field. Two balls, two strikes. Sanchez ready, and his 2 2 pitch is swung on. High drive into deep right field. She is a way back and gone. So Andre Ethier hits it into the bleachers in right field, and the Dodgers take a one to nothing lead. So somebody else besides Clayton Kershaw has now hit a home run for the Dodgers. Looked like a fastball right about at the belt. And Ethier was not about to let that thing go by. So after the previous pitch, the change down around the knees, he's all over the fastball. And the Dodgers lead one to nothing. The first pitch to A.J. Ellis, that's a strike, 0 and 1. You know, for Andre Ethier, he's had 20 home runs or more five straight years. So he starts off with one tonight. one nothing Dodgers, 0 and 2 the count to A.J. Ellis. A.J. back up and waiting, Sanchez ready. Jonathan delivers on a check swing. Swing, says Gary Davis, and that'll do it for A.J. Ellis. However, one swing of the bat, the Dodgers get a run on the home run by Andre Ethier. And at the end of two, one nothing Dodgers.
And the Dodgers lead 1-0 as we go to the third inning. Fastball just above the belt, and he hits that about halfway up the pavilion steps into right field. So Jonathan Sanchez gives up a run. Now the Bucks try, and we'll have Clint Barmas, Sanchez, and Marte in that order. So Zach Granke with a run working on the veteran shortstop. Clint Barmas. And Zach's first pitch is a little low ball one, one and oh. He's had great success against Granke. I believe he's something like seven for 11 in the past. Barmas out of Vincennes, Indiana. And the 1 0 pitch is taken for a strike. You may remember he came up to the Rockies in 2003, stayed with them through 2010. So he had eight years at Colorado, just about the same time as Clint Hurdle. He swings, pulls one on the ground at third. Luis Cruz up with it and throws him out. So Granke getting some ground balls. That's uh, five, Pitcher, yeah, five ground seven. balls so far. And with one away, Jonathan Sanchez coming up. Tomorrow night, a 6-10 game, remember, and it'll be Clayton Kershaw and A.J. Burnett. The pitch a breaking ball in for a strike to Sanchez footnote on Andre Epia's home run last year he had four home runs against left hand pitching and he now has 20 against left handers in his career a big slow curve ball Jonathan kind of wound up to swing and then checked and the pitch like a big slow curve ball just dropped in oh and to the count now let's see if he gets the express. Strike two pitch there it is fastball but he's low and away ball one one and two to Jonathan Sanchez on deck Starling Marte Granky feet together on the rubber Marte waiting on deck one out the one two pitch coming up Sanchez wails at it and fouls it back to the screen. The Pirates as we mentioned earlier have had a lot of trouble here. They've lost 14 of the last 16, 16 of the last 20 here. Over the 16 game stretch, Hurdle's boys have hit six home runs and the Dodgers 20. Here's the one two pitch swung on and missed and boy Jonathan wasn't being cheated. He swung from the heel. So Sanchez strikes out. That would be the first strike out for Zach Ranke. And with two down, the batter, Starling Marte. Marte led off opening day for the Pirates, went 0 for 3. He is the youngest player on the active roster, but he's 24 years old. And the pitch to him in for a strike, 0 and 1. When you read the line, the youngest player on the roster, they're expecting to see maybe 21 or at most 22. But Marte 24 years old strike one pitch is taken off the plate. Of course the Bucks the Bucks are like uh, not that I know anything about horse racing let's say track. It's like asking a guy who's a 60 yard dash runner to run a hundred yards. The one one pitch is swung on and missed since 1992. The Pirates have not had a winning team. They've not had a team that finished winning more games than they've lost. And yet, a couple of years in a row, they started out like they were going to change things, especially with a player like Andrew McCutcheon. The one-two pitch is strike three call. So down goes Marte. Second strikeout for Zach Granke. And at the end of two and a half innings, Dodgers won. Pirates nothing.
a dugout showing the Dodgers lead one to nothing. But the first thought I have is Hun Jin Ryu is on the railing with Clayton Kershaw and Josh and a couple of the other guys. But you just wonder the thoughts of Ryu with the noise coming out of North Korea these days. A troubled kid over here doesn't speak the language is from Incheon which was an extremely important city in the Korean War back in 1950. The strike one pitch in there 0 and 2 the count to Justin Sellers. He'll be followed by Zach Granke and then Paul Crawford. No balls and two strikes. Jonathan Sanchez comes back fastball busted on the ground to first base taking it there is Garrett Jones. Sellers unable to get around on a pitch up and in and captures the first. Zach Granke. So one away and Zach Granke coming up. We were talking and probably a bad analogy about the Pirates being a, a 60 yard sprinter asked to run let's say 100 yards or a half a mile because for the Pirates they have not had a record above 500 since 1992 when they won the National League East title and last year they certainly looked like they were going to be a winning team. Granke takes ball one. I mean last year on August the 6th Clint Hurdle's club was 16 games above 500 16 games. And what they do they promptly turned around and lost 37 of the last 54. So for the Bucks, they are just dying to have a winning year to finish above 500. Here's the 1 0 pitch on the way and that's taken for a strike. One and one the count to Granke. It's one to nothing Dodgers. A two out bases empty home run by Andre Eath here in the second inning. Zach waiting Sanchez ready. A breaking ball is hit over the mound charging at Neil Walker and can't make the play. E4 if you're keeping score. As Granke's high chopper and Walker just ran right through the ball. And Granke is aboard. Left fielder number 25, Carl Crawford. Carl Crawford will be coming up. Ball never came up. On replay, you could see Walker's glove maybe just six inches above the ground, and it went right under the leather. So Granke at first, he will put a windbreaker on. Remember, he had a tender arm in spring training. So we're waiting for Zach to button up down there. And then Carl Crawford, who struck out in the first inning. Remember, he had a three ball count. The next pitch, he started to first, it was a strike. The 3 1 pitch, he started to first, it was a strike. And the 3 2 pitch, he started to first, and it was a strike. The so Crawford waiting, and the left hand batter takes off the plate. Ball one, 1 and 0 oh the count. Of course, it's kind of early to talk about numbers, but Crawford at least began the game hitting 556. Garrett Jones off the bag. The pitch to Crawford is taken low. So two balls and no strikes. Bottom of the third. One to nothing Dodgers. Home run by Andre Ethier. Little meeting now. Russell Martin going out to talk to Jonathan Sanchez. Now Jonathan slowly getting back on the hill. One of the words I remember they said about Jonathan Sanchez when he first came up. The fact that he makes good hitters take bad swings. Jonathan looks over at Granky, not worrying about him running. Comes back to Crawford way inside almost hit him ball two. Sanchez has a pretty sneaky fastball. It'll go anywhere from the high 80s. It's been clocked as high as 95 slider and a change up. Jonathan ready and the 1 0 pitch to Crawford and that's taken for a strike. So now three and one to count and the scoreboard. Failing to pick up three balls and one strike if there's anybody listening out there. 
Out of a stretch goes Granke. The pitch is a ground ball hard, smothered by Walker. They get one. Double clutched by Barnes, and they get him anyway. The so Granke is erased at second base, but Crawford just does beat the throw at first, only because Barnes double clutched. And he's been able to get rid of the ball immediately. Of well, course, Crawford really does fly down the line. So the Dodgers still alive with two out in the third inning and Mark Ellis coming up. Though in the inning Sellers grounded out Granke on Walker's error. Crawford hits what looks like a double play but call runs like the wind and all he needed was the double clutch to beat the throw by an eyelash. So Crawford takes the lead Sanchez looks over at him and goes over there and call back on the bag. Two out in the third inning. We're not picking on the scoreboard, but they must be having some troubles out there. Sanchez, another look over at Crawford. Jonathan comes back to the plate. Fastball inside corner for a strike. Mark Ellis fouled out to Russell Martin in the first inning. Sanchez straightens up another look at Crawford as a left hander he just eyeball to eyeball still looking now comes to the plate fastball fisted foul off to the right that'll carry back into the stands. Oh and two the count to Mark Ellis. Dodgers lead one nothing in the third inning on a home run by Andre Ethier. Dodgers last year played Pittsburgh seven times and beat them six out of seven. Three and oh here. So no balls and two strikes they count to Mark Ellis. Sanchez down one nothing and the tall left hand ready checking Crawford again just staring at him and then backs off the rubber. Like gunslingers in the West who's going to draw first. Crawford inching off the bag and poised and Sanchez just staring at him. Oh and two the count to Mark Ellis. Sanchez lifts the leg comes to the plate and the breaking ball is outside. One and two to Mark Ellis. Remember tomorrow night a 6 10 game Clayton Kershaw and he'll be going up against A.J. Burnett. Ryu and Locke Sunday Dodgers then will go on the road. One and two the count. Mark Ellis waiting. Sanchez to the plate. Drops it low. Two and two the count. Waiting on deck. Matt Kemp who flied to right in the first inning. Sanchez long look into Martin then nods yes. Now he's ready. And the 2 2 pitch is instead a throw to first. Sanchez trying to be very careful here. He goes 2 and 2 to Mark Ellis. Now the left hander looks at Crawford back with a fastball, and that's fouled away. So we have two out in the third inning. Two and two count on Mark Ellis. Dodgers lead one nothing. Jonathan Sanchez, a left-hand pitcher who looks at the base runner. It's hard to believe the runners have succeeded 76% of the time. Better than three out of four. Two and two. There goes Crawford. The pitch is low. Martin's throw down is in plenty of time. I think Crawford must have thought that was ball four because he just suddenly stopped running and he was hung out to dry easily apparently confused. So that'll do it for the Dodgers and at the end of three it's one to nothing Dodgers.
I think must have thought it was ball four when he was tagged out standing up. Though the Dodgers lead one nothing in the fourth. And we have a prime ticket Twitter poll with Andrew McCutcheon leading the way. Is this the year the Pirates finished the season above 500 finally since 1992? Yes or no? Tweet hashtag Pirates yes, Pirates no, and keep tuning in. We'll look at the results later on. Andrew McCutcheon. He's on deck with Neil Walker. Then it'll be Andrew and Pedro Alvarez against Zach Granke. Off speed for a strike. Neil Walker flied to left field in the first inning. Walker switch hitter committing the error earlier. One ball and one strike. If you joined us a little late, home run by Andre Ethier has given the Dodgers a one to nothing lead. Fastball pulled just foul. So Walker turns on it, pulls it too much. And we'll back to try it again. One and two the count. Neil Walker facing Zach Granke was born in Pittsburgh. Though born to play. Lives in Gibsonia, Pennsylvania. And he was a number one pick back in 2004. Attended the All-Star game at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh when he was nine years old. The one-two pitch fouled away. Walker in high school was a wide receiver. He was also Baseball America's All-America team second base. He has a rather incredible Roberto Clemente connection. We'll, we'll see if we have time. Otherwise, we'll get it in later on. Foul ball. After the 72 season, the young relief pitcher, Tom Walker, that would be Neil's dad, played winter ball in Puerto Rico on the same team as Clemente. Well, he got to idolize Clemente. And remember, Clemente was going to load up the airplane and fly over to Nicaragua to help out the people who are homeless over there. Time. Tom Walker helped load the plane. And then Tom Walker said to Roberto, I want to go with you. And Roberto said, no, no, you stay here. I'll go. So Neil's father, Tom, stayed. Roberto took off in the airplane. It crashed and he lost his life. Neil Walker's dad lived another day two and two the count to Walker Andrew McCutcheon waiting on deck Rick Sofield coaching at first Nick Leva over at third that's ball three so for Zach 48 pitches Don Manningly before the game was talking about Cranky and remember he had a cranky arm. He said we'll be careful with him tonight as far as a pitch count. Though we'll watch it ourselves. Here's 49 fouled away. Fourth inning with the Dodgers leading the Pirates one to nothing. Walker McCutcheon Alvarez. Zach both feet very close together on the rubber and the three two pitch swung on and missed. So Walker strikes out one away in the fourth. Take another look right there. Got a little bit of it and fouled it right into the mitt of A.J. Ellis. Andrew McCutcheon. McCutcheon a first round pick. He's 26 years old. He'd be 27 in October. His father, Lorenzo, is a youth minister at the non-denominational church, and Andrew sings in the choir. He takes ball one. One and zero. Oh. 
Andrew 5'10", 185, had 31 home runs last year for the Pirates. 96 runs batted in. Check swing for a strike. And the count one and one. McCutcheon, like Walker, was another fine football player. He was a standout wide receiver, and then he hurt his knee. One and two. And after having a serious knee injury, he decided while recovering, I think perhaps I will stay with baseball, and that has certainly paid off for him. One and two to Andrew McCutcheon. Just missed with the fastball. Tell you one thing, you have to be a very confident hitter with two strikes to take that pitch. McCutcheon back up and waiting. Two and two. And ball three. Jim Leland, of course, managed in several places, including Pittsburgh, and he's now with Detroit. But way back, Jim was the manager with the Bucks from 86 to 96, and he said McCutcheon's going to be a superstar, but not right now, as he looks at a breaking ball and down he goes. Four strikeouts for Zach Ranke. And the battle will be Pedro Alvarez. Number 24, Pedro Alvarez. Oh, up here it looked like it broke a little bit, but looking at the rematch, dead down the middle. So with two out in the fourth, McCutcheon sadder and wiser, and Alvarez waiting at the plate. Dodgers lead one nothing, and that's lifted the left field. Sellers going out. Crawford has the play, and that'll be that. One nothing Dodgers at the end of three and a half. By your Southern California Kia retailers. Visit mysocialkia.com. By the wireless receiver only from AT&T U-verse. Visit att.com slash free your TV. And by our SoCal Ram dealers. Visit ramtrucks.com today. Dodgers lead one to nothing. Beautiful evening. It was 64 degrees when the game started. No breeze. Flags hanging limply in dead center. And the battle goes on between Jonathan Sanchez and Zach Granke. Bottom of the fourth, Mark Ellis, Matt Kemp, Adrian Gonzalez. And a strike on the outside corner. Mark Ellis was at the plate when I believe Carl Crawford forgot the count. 
and was going thinking it was three and two. Hard ground ball to third. Pedro Alvarez guns it to first. One away. So a nice play by Pedro. That ball was hit hard. Now Matt Kemp flied to right field in the first inning. What is more frustrating for Matt, he was allowed to swing 3 and 0, if you remember. And you figure you're swinging 3 and 0, you might hit the ball foul and take out some rows of seats, but instead just a lazy fly ball to right. 0 and 1. One run, one hit for the Dodgers, the home run by Andre Ethier. No runs, one hit for the Pirates, the infield single by Garrett Jones. Although he really drilled it hard off Mark Ellis' glove. The Bucks load up the left side as Matt Kemp waits. Pulled back a third, diving stop by Alvarez, throw on a bounce. Backhanded at first by Garrett Jones. Another nice play by Pedro Alvarez. And two down here in the fourth yeah, inning. That he looked like it was heading down the line. And Pedro scrambles. And a nice play at the end by Garrett Jones. Take another look. Boy, they are remarkable. Big league players. Eye hand coordination. Great reaction. Especially at third base. Hmm. So here is Adrian Gonzalez. Fouled out in the second inning to Alvarez. And he hits it the other way. And there's nobody there. Finally Alvarez picks it up. Running down the line. So Adrian Gonzalez. A little flare to left field for a base hit. Third baseman number 47. Luis Cruz. So a two out single will bring up Luis Cruz. One run, two hits for the Dodgers, no runs, one hit for the Pirates. Luis Cruz fly to center in the second inning. Ball one. In their series with the Cubs, the Pirates lost three to two and three to one. They shut out the Cubs 3 0. Here they are in a tough 1 0 game with the Dodgers. Tapper up the middle in position for Walker to step on the bag and that's that. So no runs, one hit, a man left. And at the end of four, it remains Dodgers 1, Pirates nothing. Nothing leaves. Jack Granke's allowed just one hit. 
that to Garrett Jones, the Pirate first baseman. And he'll be facing Russell Martin to start the inning off. By the way, it has nothing to do with the ball game, but it is a tribute to Zach Granke. When Granke pitched over in the American League, Paul Canerco, you know, the big first baseman, used to be with the Dodgers. Paul Canerco batted 136 against Granke. And Josh Hamilton, now at the Angels, he was one for 19. That's a little more than a half a buck. And that's a strike to Russell Martin. 0 and 1 the count. Martin grounded a short in the second inning. That evens it up. One ball and one strike. And missed ball two. Russell Martin, he, among other things, he was honored with the Dodgers Heart and Hustle Award. He got the award from former Dodger Maury Wills. He also won the annual Roy Campanella Award. He hits a little pop foul. AJ makes a running catch on the out. So Ellis runs back, makes the catch. Ball was barely hit high enough to get under. And AJ racing back and made the catch. So one away, nice play by AJ to get the other catcher. And the batter now, Garrett Jones. Interesting, Mark Ellis is not playing where he was playing Jones first time. Garrett hits a foul, 0 and 1. Back in the second inning, Mark Ellis was playing a good four or five feet out on the grass because they had loaded up the right side. And the one hopper that was on the grass just ate Ellis alive. I had the feeling had the ball hit the skin, the dirt part of the infield, Mark would have handled it. Well, he's right on the rim now. Well, he was a good five feet back into right field back in the second inning. Squirted the other way. Great stop by Sellers. Bounce throw in time. So with both pitchers throwing strikes, you see some fine defensive plays. We had two turned in by Pedro Alvarez at third, and now Justin Sellers takes a hit away from Jones. So two out in the fifth inning. Fine play by Justin. And the batter is Travis Snyder. Who grounded his short in the second inning. Look at that grin on Zanke's face. Oh and one. Snyder grounded his short in the second inning. 0 for 1. He's only had three at bats this year. First round pick by the Blue Jays. And ball two, two and one. Travis Snyder, in talking about the pressure of playing baseball for a living, especially at the top level in the major leagues, he's undergone anger management therapy. And another fine play. Well, we're seeing a lot of them, and all because the pitchers are throwing strikes. And at the end, uh, four and a half. One nothing Dodgers.
Andre Ethier lead one nothing. Zach Granke has been brilliant in five innings, 68 pitches. Here's the Dodgers schedule. The Bucks will be here tomorrow night and Sunday. A.J. Burnett against Clayton Kershaw tomorrow night. And remember, that's a 6-10 game. And then Sunday afternoon, Locke and Ryu. Dodgers then go on the road. A strike to Andre. 0-1-1. One, one. one run, two hits for the Dodgers. No runs, one hit for the Pirates. A fly ball going foul the other way. They've loaded up the infield on the right side. Ethier got a fastball about belt high. It was certainly a mistake pitch, and Andre made him pay for it. Oh, and two. Ah, the little slider down and away. He's not going to see that fastball, I think, ever again. So one away in the fifth inning. A.J. Ellis. Ellis struck out in the second inning. He's 0 for 1. A.J. hitting 182. And ball one. Now the 1 0 pitch on the way and that's pulled down the left field line that'll be in the corner chasing it is Starling Marte and heading for second base with a stand up double is A.J. Ellis. Boy did his bat blur. You talk about bat speed. He really jumped all over that. So a line drive double a left with one out that'll bring up Justin Sellers. For the Dodgers, their third hit. They now have a single, a double, and a home run. Marte got it back. AJ laughing. Conversation with second base umpire Dan Asanya. So Ellis waiting for a ride home, and Sellers trying to pick him up. Justin 0 for 7 in the series for the year. One ball and no strikes. Sellers made a wonderful diving stop, taking a base hit away from Garrett Jones in the fifth inning. One ball and no strikes. One and one. Granke is pitching well, and he has had to pitch well. Zach has retired 10 in a row since Jones had a base hit, and he retired five in a row before that. So he's gotten 15 out of 16. Sanchez has allowed only the home run to Ethia. And a line drive to left field coming up to flag it, however, is Marte. So Sellers hit that thing right on the button, but right at the left fielder. So a tough out, a loss of an RBI and a base hit, and the batter will be Zach Granke. Granke reached on the air, hit a high bouncer over the mound. Neil Walker charging. Ball didn't come up for him. It went right under his glove. High fastball. It was probably out of the strike zone. 0 and 1 the count. When the Bucks come up in the sixth inning, they will have Barmas, Sanchez, and then the leadoff man, Starling Marte. No balls in one strike. Now the pitch is low. So he's been high and low. One ball, one strike. Sanchez, believe me, and we said it at the very start of the game, don't let those nine losses in a row last year think that he's some Humpty. He knows how to pitch. 
One and one. Fastball lined to left. That's a base hit. Marte charging, and they will hold AJ at third base. The well, Granke, a line drive single, but he hit it so hard that Marte was able to charge it and get it in the infield. Take another look. And Starling Marte with a pretty good arm anyway. And on the dead run, he snared it. And Ellis never had a chance to score. Wallach put the stop sign up almost immediately. Nice hop, and he let it fly. So the Dodgers have first and third with two out. Granke wants that jacket, so timeout for the moment. And the batter will be Carl Crawford. Crawford struck out and hit into a force play in the third inning. One nothing Dodgers trying to add to it. Bottom of the fifth inning. Starts him with a strike. 0 oh and 1. Paul Crawford out of Houston, Texas. He'll be 32 in August. Originally drafted by the Devil Rays. Left handed all the way, hits and throws. Breaking ball away. 1 and 1. Talking about some of the other Pirates who were good football players. The University of Nebraska wanted Crawford, who had been an all state option quarterback in Houston. And that's ball two, two and one. Crawford runs very well. He has stolen as high as 60 bases a couple of years ago for Tampa Bay. Two and one. Carl Crawford grew up, from what we understand, in the fifth ward of Houston, an extremely tough neighborhood. And you know who helped him? George Foreman, the fighter. Helped him to work his way out. Oh, deuce is wild. Two balls, two strikes, two out, two on. Waved at. So Sanchez wins the battle with an off speed breaking ball. Down goes Crawford. The Dodgers lead two, and it's still 1 0.
know today that Ebbets Field opened up in Brooklyn. Charles Ebbets built a ballpark in an area that was called Pigtown, and the real estate was pretty cheap. So he built the ballpark, and the first game ever was played there a hundred years ago today. Among other things, Casey Stengel, yes, the great manager, Casey Stengel played in that first game and not only hit a home run, but hit a home run inside the park. And do you like music? To me, one of the saddest baseball songs I have ever heard. You like Frank Sinatra? Well, Frank Sinatra recorded a song called there used to be a ballpark, and it was all about Ebbets Field. Wow, what a combination, Sinatra and Ebbets Field. And with that, let's go back to this one. Ah, yes, there used to be a ballpark, but nothing is forever. That's for darn sure. I was... Uh, I was interviewed over the phone and a writer was asking about Ebbets Field disappearing and I told him a true story. I grew up in an area of New York called Washington Heights. Washington Heights when I was growing up a little boy was probably 95 percent Jewish mostly Jewish refugees escaping Hitler. Barmus a strike 0 and 1 today that same area is heavily Hispanic and it has produced some terrific players like Manny Ramirez. That's foul down the line and in that neighborhood believe it or not as a little kid maybe it was all apartment houses except about five blocks from where I live there was a castle. You say what do you mean a castle. I mean a castle. It was made of pure white Carrera marble. And it was unbelievable. It looked out across the Hudson River at New Jersey. And on a summer's night when the moon hit that castle, you just couldn't believe it. However, the owner, Dr. Paterno, passed away. His sister sold it. Today, there's maybe six or seven tall, towering apartment houses called Castle Village. We bring that up because Ebbets Field is no longer and there are apartment houses where Ebbets Field stood. Nothing is forever. Two and two the count to Clint Barmas. Lifted foul off first and out of play. Coming into the game we mentioned Barmas had been very successful against Zach Granke. He was seven for eleven. He grounded out in the third inning. Two and two the count. One nothing in favor of the Dodgers. Sixth inning. Three and two. Each pitcher pitching a gem. Dodgers one run four hits. Pirates one hit. And a high pop fly. Adrian Gonzalez. When you have a gold glove the second baseman doesn't run over. There are so many first basemen in both leagues as soon as the ball is hit in the air the second baseman is in his hip pocket but not when you have a gold glove. Take another look. Ellis comes and says oh no. The man is there. One out. Now Sanchez. One ball and no strikes. Jonathan struck out in the third inning. Granke has now retired 11 in a row. Off speed. 2 and 0. Oh. Clock that at 72 miles an hour so that indeed is off speed. Right. We were quoting Mattingly earlier about a pitch count for Granke. We don't know what it is. If I had to guess, it'd be a hundred. I don't know. He made 78 so far. Fastball down the pipe. 
Two and two the count. Just off the plate. Well, this is a rare three ball count. Got him. The Sanchez strikes out. That's 12 in a row. Retired by Granke. They be sure to bring the kids to Dodger Stadium Sunday. Dodgers and Pirates. First 15,000 ticketed kids 14 and under in attendance. Receive their own Matt Kemp replica jersey. Compliments of Dryer's Grand Ice Cream. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash promotions. Matt Kemp will be hitting second in the sixth inning. The bunt up along third. They're going to let it roll and it goes foul. Now that was a pretty good bunt by Starling Marte. And it was certainly wise to let it roll. It did not have a play on him for sure. That's a great name isn't it Starling Marte. There was a player quite a few years ago. I loved his name. Wonderful Mons. Remember Wonderful Mons? Oh and one. Mm. That was moving a little at 90. A little. A little hop to it. No balls and two strikes the count to Starling Marte. Granke retired five in a row gave up the infield single and is now retired 12 in a row. So he's gotten 17 of the 18 batters. And strike three call. So Zach Granke. Now retired 13 in a row and at the end of five and a half walks off leading one to nothing. nothing a home run by Andre Epier is the difference by the way remember the Twitter question that we had is this the year the Pirates finish above 500 53 percent said yes 47 percent said no remember the Pirates have not finished above 500 since 1992 when they won the National League East I'd like to see them get above 500 Ball one. Last year, remember the Bucks started out 62-46, and everybody was saying, 
The Pirates have finally found the way. And then they turned around and wound up four games under 500. 2 and 0 to Mark. Kind of an interesting thing. I guess it's statistical, but it, it's just really a baseball moment. There's ball three. We have had 13 and now 14 three ball counts tonight that combines both pitchers. Not only have none of them walked, 12 of the previous 13 were retired. That's a strike, three and one. So the pitchers pitching behind and getting away with it. Three and two. Jonathan Sanchez looks more like the pitcher that won 13 and pitched a no hitter than the guy who had a nightmare year last year, nine straight losses. And there's the walk. The so Mark Ellis draws the walk. First one tonight. And the battle will be Matt Kemp. Zach Granke has made 84 pitches in six innings and has allowed just one hit. Struck out six and has retired the last 13 in a row and 18 of 19. So here's Matt Kemp flied to right after being green lighted 3 and 0. Oh. And then last time up, lost a hit on a good play at third by Pedro Alvarez. That's a strike. Justin Wilson, a left-hander, gets up now down in the pirate bullpen. On one to Matt. Sanchez has certainly changed against the Dodgers. He started out 0 and 5 in his career, 3 and 1 against them now. And that's hit to the gap in right center. It will go to the wall. So here's Mark Ellis rounding third. The relay coming in to Walker, and his throw is cut off, and the Dodgers lead 2 0 on a double by Matt Kemp, his first hit of the year. His mom is here tonight. They got a standing ovation from her. So Kemp doubles to right center. Take another look. This one down to get it as the players say keeping his hands inside the ball it was finally retrieved by Snyder. He got it into Walker but Mark Ellis runs well enough to score easily on the play. Ray Searage the pitching coach going out to the mound to counsel Sanchez. And you can tell the relief on the face of Matt Kemp. Ray Searage was with the Dodgers at one stage back in 1989 and 1990. In fact, he was in 41 games and he had a record of three and four. So Ray counseling Jonathan Sanchez. We told you about Sanchez pitching a no hitter becoming the first left hand pitcher in giant history to pitch a no hitter since Carl Hubble did it. In 1929. And in that game, he didn't walk a batter, but the only base runner, ground ball by Chase Headley, and there was an error by Juan Uribe. So here now is Adrian Gonzalez trying to pick up Kemp. Two nothing Dodgers in the sixth. Out the way. 0 and 1. Adrian two for 11 in the young year. There's a beach ball loose. It's up against the box seat wall in deep right field. So time out while they go to retrieve it.
Adrian Gonzalez. 10 hits and a home run. Against Jonathan Sanchez. No doubt. Adrian with the Red Sox Sanchez with. Uh, Kansas City. Oh and one. Pick up but no throw. Ethier homered in the second and here in the sixth. Ellis got the first walk of the game and Matt Kemp got his first hit of the year as he doubled into right center to score Ellis. Pull foul. Oh and two. No balls and two strikes to Adrian. Boy, the Dodgers really came up with a winner when they built the batting cages down underneath the stands. What a great place to work out and sharpen up. 0 oh 2. Just did get a bit of that breaking ball. It was also nice that Dodger management not only had the the hitting area built for the Dodgers, they also had one for the visiting team. Gomez and Wilson down in the pen. Mark Walters taken in the game. 0 oh and 2 the count. Off the plate, ball one. 1 and 2. Dodgers lead 2 nothing. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. One ball and two strikes. Long look in. Not sure. Russell Martin shuffling cards behind the plate. Slow breaking ball. Sanchez in his past has always been fighting his control. It kept going higher and higher walks per nine innings until last year he was averaging better than seven walks per nine innings. You don't usually win. Tim Lincecum got by with that the other night but that's rare. Two and two. And pull down the right field line in the corner. Over to get the ball is Snyder. On his way to second for the double is Adrian Gonzalez. Matt Kemp brings in the run, and the Dodgers now lead three to nothing. So it has happened. The heart of the lineup, Kemp and Gonzalez beating loudly tonight. Kemp had a flare single to left, and now the line drive double to right. Kemp had doubled in Ellis. So it's a two run inning. Dodgers lead 3 0. And for Jonathan Sanchez, he has to come out. Was pitching so well until he gave up the walk. Up jumped the devil, and out he goes. We'll be back.
for your next car at CarMax. By El Pollo Loco, crazy you can taste. And by Time Warner, enjoy all the things you like better. Call Time Warner Cable at 1-855-1-TWC. Here in the sixth inning, a walk to Mark Ellis, and then back-to-back -back doubles by Kemp and Gonzalez. That will chase Jonathan Sanchez with the Dodgers leading 3-0. Genmar Gomez, he spells that first name, J-E-A-N-M-A-R, but it's pronounced Genmar. He's from Caracas, Venezuela, only 25 years old, 6'3", 200-pounder, and originally obtained from Cleveland. Last year, he was on Cleveland's opening day roster and split the season between Cleveland and Columbus, the AAA club. So here's Luis Cruz at the plate. And ball one. Cruz fly to center, hit into a force play. On deck, Andre Ethier. Garrett Jones well in on the grass at first, thinking bunt. One ball and no strikes. Two and oh. Gomez with Cleveland last year was five and eight. Fast ball golfed over the third. Tough play. They'll have a tag. And not a very smart play by Adrian Gonzalez to come over with a ball hit ahead of him. A bad base running play. But even Homer nods, even the veterans do it occasionally. But you just have no chance to go with a ball hit ahead of you. Look at that. So that will take care of Gonzalez, who is safely aboard at first. To err as human, and I'm sure Adrian will take that to heart. Yeah, he's angry. So it kind of runs you out of an inning. You have one out instead of a runner at second. You have the runner at first, and you paid the price. Ethier, a line drive, yep, caught by Walker. They double up Cruz, and that's that. So the Dodgers get a walk and two doubles, settle for two, and at the end of six, lead 3-0.
Dodgers and Zach Granke leading three nothing as we go to the seventh inning. Granke has made 84 pitches in his six innings. He's retired 13 in a row and he's actually gotten 18 of 19. The only base runner in the second inning with Mark Ellis playing out on the grass and the Dodgers loading up the right side of the infield. Garrett Jones hit a sinking line drive. The similar play on the dirt and I think Mark makes the play but he was on the grass and when the ball hit the grass it skidded exploded and it went by him and that's the only hit given up by Granke the only man to be on the base path. Neil Walker flied to left struck out. Remember the Dodgers were talking about a pitch count for Granke. They didn't indicate the number. I was guessing 100. But it's now he's made 86 pitches and he's in the seventh. And Rick Honeycutt adding them up. That's going to go foul out of play. Down in the Dodger bullpen, left hander Paco Rodriguez. And he might be joined in a minute. Yeah. Ronald Belisario gets up. So they're getting close to thinking about Granky. It's a long year. Two and one. Fastball on the corner. Two and two. Outside of the base hit by Jones. The only other play that might have been a base hit was Garrett Jones who hit a shot in the hole in the fifth inning and Justin Sellers a diving stop scramble to his feet and threw him out. Now back. Game one of the three game series don't forget tomorrow night a 6 10 game A.J. Burnett for the Pirates and Clayton Kershaw on the mound for the Dodgers. Sunday afternoon, Ryu and Locke. Two balls, two strikes. Fast ball just missed. He had him set up. Giants won today. Barry Zito pitched a gem. They beat the Cardinals one to nothing. And a line drive at Adrian. So Neil Walker, a bullet for an out. That's the hardest Andrew hit McCutcheon. ball by the Bucks. And the batter now, Andrew McCutcheon. Andrew flied to center and struck out. So McCutcheon, 0 for 2. Andrew had a big thrill. Last summer it was in August and he bangs one for a base hit. His mom sang the national anthem. Pirate to a, a game between the Pirates and the Diamondbacks. No surprise she sings in the choir with her son. So a one out single but on the heels of the line drive. So now you figure that Granke after 92 pitches will really bear watching. Pedro Alvarez who has grounded out and flied out coming up. Rick Honeycutt. Going through the files. And I think that will be it. For Granky. 92 pitches. And with a left hand hit of Alvarez coming up. And Paco Rodriguez throwing in the Dodger bullpen. Great outing by Zach Granky in his debut as a Dodger. And he'll get a well deserved ovation. And with that, we'll be back.
Paco Rodriguez in relief now of Zach Granke who made 92 pitches. Paco of course was a remarkable story last year. The Dodgers signed him out of the University of Florida. He was with Chattanooga for 16 games started at Great Lakes and appeared in six games and with only 22 games under his belt he was in 11 games in the big league so he came out of nowhere. Steven Paco Rodriguez out of Miami 6'3 220. 22 years old come the 16th of April. So here is Pedro Alvarez who is grounded out fly to left made two very good plays defensively in the fourth inning. And there goes McCutcheon the throw down they got him. Andrew McCutcheon stole 20 bases last year. But Paco had a good job of holding and A.J. Ellis hung him out to dry. So they gamble and they pay for it and that's the second out. Sellers making the tag. Oh and one. Take another look at Sellers getting down in the mud to make the tag on the hands. McCutcheon pulled the right hand back tried to tag with the left but. Sellers wouldn't go for the fake. And a strong throw by A.J. Ellis and a disappointed McCutcheon back in the dugout. Wow. So Alvarez strikes out. No runs, one hit, nobody left. And at the end of six and a half, Dodgers three, Pirates nothing. And a reminder, Monday, April the 15th, the first 40,000 fans in attendance at Dodger Stadium will receive a Jackie Robinson, Don Newcomb, and Roy Campanella statue presented by the film 42 in theaters April 12th. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash promotion. Jenmar Gomez still out there on the mound. In relief of starting pitcher Jonathan Sanchez. Dodgers will have A.J. Ellis, who made that good throw to Neil McCutcheon. Then Justin Sellers and Paco Rodriguez spot, unless they hit for him. And a strike.
Kenley Jansen is now throwing in the Dodger bullpen. Slider. 0 and 2. So you would think with Jansen throwing in the pen and Paco Rodriguez due to bat third, they would be hitting for Paco. Great performance by Zach Granke, six and a third, two hits, nothing else, 92 pitches. Granke struck out six. One and two the count. Fastball, little roll of Alvarez. High throw, good toe dance over there by Garrett Jones. And we have one away. Justin Sellers grounded to first, came up with a runner at uh, second base and one out in the fifth inning and hit one right on the screws but right at Starling Marte in left field. He also made a brilliant defensive play to take a hit away from Garrett Jones in the fifth inning. Fastball for ball one. Jenmar Gomez facing Justin Sellers. Fastball hit down to shortstop. Barnes makes the play. Two down in the seven. Dodgers will go to the pinch hitter, and Jerry Hairston started up, but now Nick Punto comes up. So Hairston was out in the on deck circle. So Nick Punto will be hitting for Paco. And then we'll see Kenley Jansen. Punto uh, came along with Beckett and Gonzalez from Boston. Nick lived down around Mission Viejo, grew in San Diego, and was originally drafted by the Phillies. Strike one. Punto describes himself as, as the kind of a kid who would go out to play and come home in an ambulance. I guess he loved to take chances. He talked about the fact he was about 13 and there was an eight foot ramp and a big jump on the dirt hills and you'd actually fly about 15 feet. And land in a ditch. You really have to get your speed up coming down the hill, and you would launch yourself. So you know, there he is, coming down, and there was this little kid playing directly in front of him. So his choices were either to crash into the child or throw the bike and kill himself. Well, he threw the bike, wound up with scars, stitches, and a bloody face. But that's kind of a player he is. He is a battler. Hunter also had the nickname Shredder, even at those times last year when the Dodgers won and he was with them. Remember, he was one of the guys who'd always try to tear the uniform off. Still one and two on the foul ball. Two down, bottom of the seventh inning, bases empty. Dodgers lead 3 0. Ethier homered in the second inning. Kemp doubled home Ellis, who had walked, and Gonzalez doubled home Kemp. And that's been it. One and two. Two and two. For the Pirates, they have not had a man get to second base. They had a single by Garrett Jones in the second and their only other hit a single by McCutcheon in the seventh and he was thrown out trying to steal. Two and two. Little high and of course Puno going into a crouch. He's five nine so you're not going to get much of a strike zone with him anyway.
Punto went to Trabuco High, not too far from Aliso Miguel, where Skip Schumacher went to school. Ground ball gobbled up at short by Barnes. So the Dodgers are done in the seventh, and at the end of seven, Dodgers three, Pirates nothing. The Dodger mini plan you can choose from bobblehead nights rivalry matchups or maybe your preferred day of the week with tickets starting at eleven dollars a game. So visit Dodgers.com slash mini plans or give us a call three two three Dodgers. Don't forget tomorrow night Clayton Kershaw and A.J. Burnett in case you've forgotten about Burnett has been over in the American League until last year. He won 18 for the Blue Jays in 2008 and last year with Pittsburgh was a 16 game winner. So that ought to be a great matchup. A.J. Burnett and Clayton Kershaw. That's the Saturday night 610 special Sunday afternoon Ryu and Locke and the Dodgers then will go breed on the road to San Diego and Arizona and come right back to play San Diego. The paid attendance tonight, 40,607, and all eyes are on Kenley Jansen. Jansen pitching to Russell Martin, Garrett Jones, and Travis Snyder. Hello, ball one. Kenley, of course, a rather imposing figure. He is six feet six. About 250 pounds standing on that 10 inch mound. Two and oh. Martin tonight grounded to short and fouled out to A.J. Ellis. We're in the eighth inning. And that's in there. Last year, Kenley Jansen easily ranked in the top three of Major League relievers and the lowest opponent's batting average. Craig Kimbrell, who was amazing with Atlanta, the opposition hit 126. Araldis Chapman, who throws at 100 miles an hour for Cincinnati, the opposition hit 141. And Kenley Jansen for the Dodgers, the opposition hit 146. Three and one. And popped up and up and up. And let's see, Ellis to the screen. It will be on the other side. Went down that away. So three and two the count to Russell Martin.
Russell off to a slow start. 0 for 12. And 0 for 2 tonight. Three and two. And ball four. So Jansen walks a man. Jonathan Sanchez went five innings plus and walked the leadoff man Mark Ellis in the sixth inning. Granke went six and a third, did not walk anybody. And now Jansen walks his first man, Martin. And that brings up Garrett Jones. Jones can certainly get you into a ball game quickly. He has a single. And then he was robbed by Justin Sellers, so he could easily be two for two. And a strike to Garrett. Off speed, badly fooled, 0 and 2. Garrett Jones hit 27 home runs last year for the Pirates. Dodgers remember him, certainly. So does Vicente Padilla. Down he goes. Jones, as he walks back to the dugout, was the first player in Pirate history to homer in each of his first two at bats against Vicente Padilla two years ago in Pittsburgh. Then in the second game, he hit a home run against Chad Billingsley. So Garrett had three home runs in his first two games against the Dodgers, so he can swing it. One out, and Travis Snyder at the plate. Snyder grounded to short and lined out to Cruz. And a strike. It was a fine pitching duel for five innings between Jonathan Sanchez, Zach Granke, the only difference, a home run by Epia, and the Dodgers on a walk and a couple of doubles, Chase Sanchez, and lead 3-0. Oh, and two the count to Travis Snyder. And ball one. One and two. Three runs, six hits for the Dodgers, no runs, two hits for the Pirates. Dodgers have made it a habit of late of beating the Pirates. They've beaten them 16 of the last 20 meetings and 14 out of 16 here at Dodger Stadium. Clint Hurdle trying to solve the pitching of the Dodgers, Messrs. Granke, Rodriguez, and now Jansen. One and two. Check swing. We're looking over at third, and I guess I missed the call. It's strike three. So that'll do it for Travis Snyder. So after Martin walks, just a high fastball, a check swing, but he's done. And the batter will be Clint Barman. So Snyder, like Jones, putting the bat quietly back away. Clint Barmas is not going to come up. Josh Harrison 
He's going to come up at bat for him. So the Bucks running out of innings, trying to get something started. And Josh Harrison, who's only 5'8", but he's 5'8", about 190 pounds, out of Cincinnati. In fact, he went to school at the University of Cincinnati, and he has to be a favorite of yours if you remember John T-Bone Shelby, one of the all-time favorite Dodgers. Well, Harrison's uncle is John Shelby. In fact, uh, as Josh Harrison waits around the dugout, he was drafted, his brother was drafted by the Tampa Bay Rays about 12 years ago, but finally gave it up, his brother Prince. So Kenley Jansen got a little information on how to pitch to Harrison. With the Pirates last year, he had three home runs. Martin at first, two out. The only men to get on base tonight, Garrett Jones with a single in the second inning. McCutcheon who single and was thrown out trying to steal in the seventh. And now Martin here in the eighth. And ball one. So Kenley Jansen has to make the Bucks walk the plank. One and oh to Josh Harrison. Right. One and one. Last May, Josh Harrison got his name in the papers. He broke up a possible Justin Verlander no hitter. With a one out single in the ninth inning. One and one. One and two. The Pirates actually traded for Harrison. They sent John Graybow, Tom Grazalani to the Cubs to get him. One and two to Josh. And a high fly ball, very playable. Matt Kemp is out there. So, Harrison, a fly ball. They leave Martin, and we're going to the bottom of the eighth. Three to nothing, Dodgers. to Mark Ellis and then Matt Kemp doubled into right center to knock in Mark Ellis and for Matt his first hit of the year and an RBI. 
that Dodgers got going because then Gonzalez double home him. Back in the second inning, Andre Ethier had homered, put it all together, and the Dodgers have a three to nothing lead. Denmar Gomez still in there, picked up in the sixth inning, and he'll be facing in order Carl Crawford, Mark Ellis, and Matt Kemp. Josh Harrison, a little infielder who pinch hit for Clint Barmas, has taken over at shortstop. And bottom of the eighth. Brandon League has been throwing in the Dodger bullpen after Kenley Jansen took care of the eighth inning. Oh, there's Brandon getting ready to close up. Uh, one hopper to short. Staying with it is Alvarez. Boy, he has played a fine defensive game at third base. One away. He made back to back dandies on Mark Ellis and Matt Kemp in the fourth inning. So one out, and here's Mark Ellis, fouled out, rounded to third, and then walked in the sixth inning. And that was the beginning of the end for Jonathan Sanchez. His only walk, but it was followed by doubles by Kemp and Gonzalez. Mark hitting 273. Fastball almost got him. Ball one. Jenmar Gomez doing well. He's gotten six in a row. That's a strike. Tomorrow night. 6-10, Clayton Kershaw and A.J. Burnett. Went right through a 89-mile-an-hour fastball. Mark 3 for 11. Fastball missed. He's just throwing harder. Got it up to 91. Zach Granke made 92 pitches. Jonathan Sanchez, 87. Three and two. We've had a lot of three ball counts. Russell Martin walked for the Pirates, and Mark Ellis walked for the Dodgers. That's it. Despite all those three ball counts. And a high fly ball down the left field line, crossing the line as Marte reaches over the wall and can't make the play. So Starling with a sterling effort. He had to avoid the man with the chair and the ball as well. Though so Marte back to his position and the count three and two to Mark Ellis. Dodgers three, Pirates nothing. We're in the eighth inning. Fastball by the diving Alvarez. So Mark Ellis, who usually sees a lot of pitches, Saw a lot of pitches and finally single a left. For the Dodger offense, it has certainly not been a lot. It's been enough to do the job, however, behind some brilliant pitching. Yet Ethy is home run. Six Dodgers now with a hit. Matt Kemp got his first hit and picked up an RBI. And where the Dodgers were one for 14 and two for 27 with runners in scoring position against the Giants, they're two for five tonight. So with one out, here's Matt. And the strike. On one. Matt's mom was here. And when he got that base hit, you knew he was pointing with both fingers to her as if to say, it's over.
all in one to Matt Kemp. Fastball, 0 and 2. Throws a nice, easy 90. Jim Ma Gomez, there's his mom. As she jumped up, both hands high in the air, cheering. Matt let her know he was aware of her, and vice versa. 0 and 2. When the Pirates come up in the ninth inning, Jenmar Gomez, the pitcher, is due out. Then it'll be Starling Marte and Neil Walker. And if anybody gets on, Andrew McCutcheon. So don't go wandering off. In the dirt, nice save by Martin. Matt Kemp. Was 0 for 2 tonight before he got the hit. So he was 0 for 12. His longest career hit was at bat streaks. 21. And going back to last year. He was 20. 1 and 2. And little ground ball to short. Harrison quickly for one. That's enough. Walker holding on. So Kemp hits into a force play, 6 4. Mark Ellis getting down there to make sure there was no throw. And the batter will be Adrian Gonzalez. So Matt Kemp back to the dugout. And now as he holds on at first, here's Adrian Gonzalez. Gonzalez using the whole field popped up to third fouled out single a left and double into the right field corner. Three nothing Dodgers bottom of the eighth inning. Ball one. Paid attendance tonight, 40,607. Sanchez, five innings plus, gave up the three. Gomez has done very well since. Fastball, line drive, and he stays with it. Great play. The Jen Mar Gomez driven to his knees, but he holds on to the line drive. So no runs, one hit, a man left. And at the end of eight, three nothing Dodgers. Doing a pretty good job with the gloves as well. Case in point tonight, 
Oh, will rewind the ball game. First of all, a nice pick by Luis Cruz. Line drive at Adrian and a sprawling stop and throw by Justin Sellers. All for outs. Applause and a smile from Zach Franke. And now to close it up is Brandon Lee. So Brandon Lee will face Tabata batting for Gomez. Jose Tabata from Venezuela. Right handed all the way and a strike. With the Pirates last year, he had 243. In his brief career with the Bucks, four home runs are high. 0 and 1. One ball and one strike. So Brandon Lee trying to close it up. The pride of Sacramento, and of course, he was raised in Honolulu. So, trying to say aloha to the Bucks. Fouled away. One and two, the count. Three nothing Dodgers top of the ninth inning. One and two. In the dirt. A staggering block by A.J. Ellis. Jose was signed by the Yankees on his 16th birthday. Never made it to New York. Just missed. Good fastball at 95 and down. Three and two. Fouled at the plate. Then you have Starling Marte on deck, followed by Neil Walker. The Bucks have two hits, single by Jones and a single by McCutcheon. And line to center, Kemp is there. The so line drive out, one away. Just to take a quick look at Major League Baseball, Baltimore was trailing by a run in the eighth inning, and the amazing Chris Davis hit a grand slam. The Orioles took the lead, beat Minnesota. Davis. Four home runs and 16 runs batted in in his first four games. Meanwhile, Barry Zito pitched a gem. Giants beat the Cardinals 1 0, and Troy Tulowitzki figured in a victory over San Diego. Strike. Right. Marte grounded to short and then struck out twice, so he's 0 for 3. One out in the ninth inning. Breaking ball strike. So from 95 to 86. Fastball pulled but right down to Cruz. Wow, a bit of a toe dance. And Gonzalez does a fine job of avoiding the runner. That's why first base you really have to have some pretty good footwork and take a look not only at a gold glove gold feet. The throws okay but it's into the runner and watch Gonzalez drag that right foot across and got the left one out of the way. There he comes. Just did keep the right foot on and avoid the collision with Marte. It is not easy. So two out in the ninth inning and the Dodgers trying to make it 15 out of 17 and 17 out of 21 against the Pirates.
And another strike. The Pirate hitters have worked nine three ball counts, and out of all of that, they've had one walk and one single. 0 oh 2. Down he goes. So Neil Walker strikes out to end the ball game. And for the Dodgers to win it, three runs, seven hits, and no errors. No runs, two hits, and one error for the Bucks. The winning pitcher is Granky, and the losing pitcher is Jonathan Sanchez. And by the way, Brandon Lee made 13 pitches to do the job. So the Bucks got a couple of men on, two singles and a walk. They never had a runner to second base. Dodgers didn't do too much, but enough to win. Ethy is home run in the second inning, and then in the sixth, Ellis, Mark Ellis, walked against Sanchez. Kemp doubled him home with a shot to right center, and Gonzalez pulled one into the right field corner for a double to score Kemp, and that, for all intents and purposes, was the ball game. Dodger pitching tonight brilliant. Messrs. Granke, then Rodriguez, then Jansen, and finally Brandon Lee. So the Dodgers win it three to nothing. A reminder, stay tuned for Dodgers Live coming up next. Good night, everybody.